that's going on here and uh, I was actually looking for another exhibition but uh, when I stuck my head in here I said uh, this is uh, interesting ambitious stuff so uh, we're gonna take a little look they're calling this in the uh, press release Sarah Kane's first monumental floor painting. And this activates the entire 2,500 square foot viewing space. And uh, viewers are invited to come in and interact and walk on this. And I guess ultimately you're going to be adding your footprints and uh, other personal marks here. Well, this looks like it's actually on uh, some kind of linoleum tile, so I guess you can uh, probably roll this up and uh, reinstall it somewhere if you like. Well, I've been uh, looking at Sarah's paintings for quite a while. I uh, did a piece dealing with California artists a couple of years ago and uh, Sarah Kane was one of the people who kept popping up. This piece is titled Deep Blue 2016 acrylic on canvas 72 by 60 inches and I think uh, Sarah is one of the young youngish painters that's uh, kind of pushing the boundaries and doing some new things and it's I would say in certain ways it's kind of uh, parallel to the kind of painting that uh, Chris Martin is doing in a certain way oh, this is a cute little piece this is six acrylic and gouache on dollar bill titled Spiraling, 2016 acrylic on canvas. And Sarah's doing a lot of this with spray paint and then uh, going in with her flat acrylic and uh, 
filling in some other spaces. And in that way, she kind of uh, relates to what people like Tamara Gonzalez are doing. It's titled Together. Acrylic beads and string on canvas. Uh, okay, so she's got strings of beads on here. And uh, it's kind of made me think of Donna Nelson, a great New York painter who has been uh, working for years but only started to get a lot of attention in the last four or five years. And uh, I think one of the other things I think is interesting about Sarah is that uh, she's kind of questioning what is a painting, what you can do with a painting. When does a something stop being a painting and start being something else? So you've got these uh, crystal teardrops hanging on there and more beads. titled Light Matter. This is Night Kisses 2014. Oil, pastel, acrylic, and chain on canvas. Okay, well, we'll just uh, kind of do a quick description. So we've got this oval lip kind of hangs over here, and that's just kind of loosely laying over the canvas. And we've got this section here that's patterned. And uh, the chain, which kind of uh, makes an arcing form that echoes this overlapping sheet. And, uh, well, I like the straight, uh, just chunky sections of color. It's a cute little piece. And again, we've got, uh, little teardrops. This is Untitled Splattered Prism. This is 22 by 18 inches. See, this piece caught my eye. It'll enter the center 2016. And uh, well, there's a lot of decorative elements about this beyond the uh, symmetrical layout. We've got these uh, chains. This is like something that would be hanging on the shoulder of a military uniform. And then uh, little sections of chains that are hanging loose. She's got a great color sense. This is titled Weaves. Well, I was astounded at the amount of uh, development going on outside. I was here two months ago. And uh, there was a whole little strip of about three or four galleries in a building, and they're all gone, and they've th they're throwing up a new building now. Uh, it's got beads and acrylic on canvas, 60 by 48 inches. And in this case, we've just uh, got strands of beads. Now, 
I actually am from the West, so every now and then I end up out in Idaho, and sometimes we go to a local uh, Indian festival out on the reservation, and uh, I'm always uh, attracted to the booths where they're selling lots and lots of beads just like this. But it's nice that uh, she's using these as just uh, kind of color and textural elements. And uh, yeah, this kind of uh, wavy brush stroke in the back makes me think a little bit of uh, some of Jack Torkov's late paintings. This is the piece that uh, caught my eye from the street and made me decide I had to come in here. This is Untitled Beads. This is 104 by 72 inches. So it's eight and a half by six feet. And well, I like the uh, kind of the stark, almost video-like uh, color basic painting and you got a couple of sections here gestural brushworks these look like uh, you know, paint pours somebody like uh, Morris Lewis would pour a bucket of paint on the side here but and uh, yeah, then we've got the little uh, bands of beads on here So, uh, this is nice the way that this fits in with the color scheme of the installation. It's titled Emily. Sunglasses. Acrylic paint canvas pinwheels on canvas. Well, I guess Sarah is a LA-based artist, and I've actually seen several people kind of using this flower form. It makes me think of the backdrop for the dating game from the 1960s, or uh, maybe some kind of uh, wallpaper that would be designed by the the Imes. <laughs> and uh, it just got a little uh, metal flake pinwheels in there. And that's all laying over a kind of a splashy gestural ground. See, this might be uh, my favorite piece in the show, at least coloristically. This is titled Reflect Water Light 2016 Acrylic Wash Prisms and Thread on Canvas 60 by 48 inches. And, uh, oh, well, I've been mentioning that a lot of work that I've seen so far this year has got glitter. And so she's got the glitter in there. Also, she's got her uh, crystal balls. Well, I think maybe the reason I like this one is that she's got some more uh, articulate sections of paint in here. This is all very dry, and it looks like she's got a lot of... Uh, pearlescence or metallic things that she's added in the paint. Oh, this is also great with the uh, installation. It's titled Loopy 2016 Acrylic on Canvas. And, uh, okay, so she's got some strips of loose hanging canvas. Kind of recalls Alan Shields or somebody like that. Uh, and these loopy lines make me think of uh, some of Bryce Martin's paintings from the 90s. And, uh, well, we just looked at a series of paintings by Matthew Neil Garrick, which employs a 
kind of swooping wobbly line like this and we've got uh, spray paint drips splatters this is six by five feet and we're gonna end up looking at this piece Black Magic 2016 acrylic twine staples and beads on canvas. Okay, so now we've got some very tiny beads sewed on individually. And, uh, well, we went to a show of Wendy White's work during the summer and she was doing some things with kind of nets or meshes of colored string tied together. This is 76 by 48 inches. Okay, we're gonna run next door and try to get in and see another show. Bye. Jessica Stockholder titled The Guests All Crowded Into the Dining Room. This is a change from the Sarah Kane painting show. I'll read a little bit from the press release. Mitchell and Nash is delighted to present Jessica Stockholder. The guests all crowded into the dining room. The studio-based works are made from both purchased and found materials, all of which are designed and manufactured by other people. Furniture, plastic goods, fabric hardware, paint paper. The line between raw material and found objects is blurry, and the intended life of these objects is discarded, but not forgotten. And uh, I'm calling this a large-scale site-responsive installation in addition to distinctive studio works. It presents an image, it is a sculpture, it is a pedestal, and a viewing platform. In this case, the work allows the viewer a set of drawings and it acts as a pedestal for shadows over and this is the title piece of the show this is the guests all crowded into the dining room platform deck ramp railing wire cable and uh, this kind of abstract violet form uh, hanging with the cables is a very nice part of this and uh, well okay so we've got uh, ice trays conch shells scallop shells looks like an empty wine bottle This is all on uh, heavy-duty beams. And then she's got uh, a series of wall drawings. It says, uh, this work can be walked on, sat on, used for performance, and is to be looked at. This is titled Assist Number Four Carved Spaces JS702. Okay, so we've got painted steel furniture. Plastic. Nylon webbing. What does that say? Take note, this structure will not stand on its own. Okay. 
<laughs> well, that sounds like what we should tag on a lot of uh, art theory. Please do not sit. This is detached detail. Okay, now this piece strikes me as being much more uh, pain really, maybe. We're dealing with color. And uh, yeah, if you go and look at it from a certain angle, it is almost uh, a rectangle. Okay, here we go for the uh, materials. Industrial metal fencing. Dance floor, leather, vinyl, rope, hardware, floor tile, floor mats, masonry, square tile, bent metal rod, acrylic, and oil paint. This is 57 by 46 by 60. And, uh, yeah, well, we've got to have some paint poured on there somehow. This is titled Smoke and Mirrors. Unistrut acrylic paint, blue tarp, copper wire, plastic parts, metal parts, hardware, yellow webbing, and winch. Take notice this structure will not stand on its own. This is titled Security Detail. Okay, so, uh, yes, we can all go shopping at Lowe's or Home Depot and get most of this stuff. This is Unistrut, old scarf of, old scrap of tire. Wooden stool, hardware, braided metal cable, plastic parts, shoulder bag, acrylic paint, oil paint, and roofing tar. And, uh, yeah, somehow the way she's got this positioned makes you think that the, uh, the sculpture is somehow paying attention to or maybe even painting that little panel there. Blanketed crowd development. Oh, I like that. Paint covered roots. Goat skin. Yellow metal post, yellow tarp, Unistrut black computer bag, and strap, sheepskin, acrylic paint, oil paint, fabric, latex caulking, tree root and hardware. Oh. This has been James Com bringing you a double feature. We started out with Sarah Kane, Dark Matter, Gallery Leglong. And we've just wrapped up looking at Jessica Stockholder. The guests all crowded into the dining room at Mitchell, Innes and Nash. Here on West 26th Street in Chelsea. And say it with me, people, after 11 years. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> nice ending there. Thank you. Thanks for recording. That was good.